Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another Last Epoch dev stream. As always, I'm your host, Mike, but I have a special guest for you today. Everybody, please welcome to the stage. Everybody, please welcome to the stage, my friend, our lore master, it's Kyle. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Uh-oh, not going through yet. Turn your microphone on. It should be oh, on. It, it was my mistake. I just had you muted. Hey, first time. Perfect. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> ah, perfect. Ah, oh, that's right. <laughs> All right. First try. We got in. No technical difficulties. Oh, so oh, good. Fantastic. Honestly, my, my default Discord background is working perfectly. Good, good, good. All right, and we have um, our usual uh, Fitz is here giving us questions, which is awesome. Oh no! Just Thank you, Fitz. Just gotta hide this for one second. Appreciate it much. Two seconds here. And we're back. All right. Does it work? Oh, we're good. We're golden. Okay. Ah, got... we're good again. <laughs> We are going to be doing our usual. Um, I'm just going to be playing the game, uh, mucking about, having some fun in the background while Kyle handles the stream. No, uh, <laughs> we're going to be doing a lore-focused stream today, so uh, I would really like to encourage everyone to um, bring uh, questions about the lore you've got, if there's anything you've been like wondering about or uh, cool things you're curious about. Um, uh, anything lore-related, this is Kyle's wheelhouse. This is this is who we want to be talking to. Um and as we know, this is probably my biggest weak point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's okay, Mike. Yeah, thank you. So as usual, <laughs> please put at last epoch game in the question and it will be uh, funneled to us where uh, we can answer them. Uh, floor questions are preferred today, but if you have other questions, please feel free to ask those too and I'll, I'll tackle those. Um, as always, we do stream for charity. Uh, we got our charity above my head here and... Um, I think we can hop right in. I think that's about it, isn't it? That sounds about right. And it looks like we already have a question right off the bat. And I'll go ahead and just read it out. Why are there no fish NPCs in the game? We have bird people for Raya, the Osprix, elk people for Hira, the Wingari, snake people for Machasa, not the Skellbane, that's actually the Nagasa. The Skellbane are the uh, bandits in the area who are actually oppose the Nagasa, hence you know, scale Bane, and it was, and, you know, humans with the terror. Why did Lagan not make his own people? So, fun fact, there actually is a follower race for Lagan. It's the Maruna. And as I'm sure if you played through the chapter featuring Lagan, I always had the, like, I almost said chapter G because I've got, like, the dev names in my head instead of, like, the numbered names. That'd be chapter 8. So... Yeah, so in, if you play through chapter 8 featuring all the Lagan stuff in the Isle of Storms, I'm sure you, you know, have you know, run into the Maruna Sirens and the Adrift Maruna and the Maruna Ogres. Those are actually the equivalent of the Wangari and the Osprix and the Nagasa. The reason why they don't really encounter any like Maruna NPCs, it kind of ties into Lagan's nature of being a more kind of chaotic, neglectful, kind of capricious god. Lagan just wasn't really interested in making uh, like societies and culture with his Maruna, as opposed to the more hands-on Raya and Hirod and Majasa, and a lot like a lot of the culture organization you see in Lagan's domain is actually you know done by architect Liath, who kind of took on that role of kind of actually organizing this place instead of just letting it just kind of be storms and left to pirates. So the Maruna are are fish NPCs and you don't really get a chance to interact with any really because you don't they don't really have a reason to try and interact with humans. They just want to eat them. So that is first the relationship of the Maruna with humans is much less open for interactions compared to the other follower races. And a lot of that comes down to Lagan's kind of neglectful nature. This this is great because uh, I, I had no idea about that myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is also educate Mike about lore stream as well. 
And uh, actually, fun fact, um, I'm sure many people now have interacted with the our you know our item factions the circle of fortune and merchants guild very early on in the like planning stages of the circle of fortune one of the npc ideas we actually played with ended up not, not going with was the idea of having a maruna in a tank of water get it kept in the back of the circle of fortune and they'd be like divining prophecies using like you know, starlight filtered through water. And we ended up not going with that for a variety of reasons, but there actually was, you know, a Maruna NPC in the plans for a little bit there before we pivoted to something, you know, that worked a little bit better. So we have considered having Maruna NPCs in the past and, you know, actually quite recently. Nice. And up to our next question. <clears throat> Sorry for non-lore question. Uh, so this one's going to be for Mike, probably. Do you have plans to take a big look at the Shaman and Forest Master passive trees? Looking at the offensive and defensive power in newer trees makes me think that there is a lot of potential for Shaman slash for, for that Forge Master trees to get overhauled. Is yes, is this a cycle two possibility? Mike, what do you think? <laughs> um, well, first off, you can feel free to correct the uh, the terms as you read them if it makes it easier for you. Um, oh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Uh, I was just kind of going off the cuff and yeah, I was going to go off the either, either way, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I, 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 felt, I felt the stuff because it happens to me all the time. Forge Guard, yes. Um, it's Rune, Rune Master and Forge Guard. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, I, I think that we will... Hmm, I can't give any specifics on what's coming in Cycle 2. There are a uh, significant number of adjustments we've made to passives in general. Um, and uh, Forge Guard and Shaman have not been forgotten in there. Um, I don't want to s accidentally start some rumor of a, of a rework or something like that. Um, but, but yeah, they, there's we, we know there's some love that is needed there, and uh, we are looking at passives. Um, there's a big passive update branch that hasn't been merged in yet, but uh, hopefully soon. <laughs> Good answer. Up next is, any discussions on a third artisan faction? I guess that'd be... You know, item faction, a third item faction, or even more for the future. So, we can't go into any details on anything like that yet, but the faction system as a just kind of a framework for that style of system and interaction is something that we are you know, very excited to play with in the future. It gives us a really nice just framework to build inside of. So like a lot of that work that went into the creation of, you know, Merchant's Guild and Circle of Fortune was creating that framework for factions. So we can't go into any detail on, you know, you know, what future factions would be if it, if they are even involved with items in you know in any case. Like but we have a framework for factions now. We have the tech now for ranks and favor, and reputation and everything. So we definitely have talked about, okay, we have these tools now. We have this framework now. We can do things with these now. So we can't say what, but we, you know, we have the tools. Would, you know, make sense to use them. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we will be, I can say we can say this. I've said this before. We will be adding more factions to the game. Um, oh, perfect. And they won't necessarily be mutually exclusive with the item factions. So, like, we can, um, we, we, we have it planned to add more sets of factions or even individual factions, too. So, um, the, the, we, we, adding a third faction as a um, mutually exclusive option with the other two item factions as a crafting faction is this artisan faction. Um, it, probably, probably not going to happen. Um, but, but there's a possibility that there could be a, unrelated faction um, that, that maybe does cool stuff in the future. <laughs> Alrighty. Next question. What are the other six rings besides being referred to on Red Ring of Alaria? Altua Atalaria. Was influenced by Lord of the Rings or Lend Corpus ring colors, excluding the OP black and white? Do we get more lore about them when the next characters come? Is Atalaria a person or a place? So I will say I'll be upfront here. The uh, lore on the Red Ring of Al, you know, Atlaria and the other rings isn't something that's going to be touched on that soon. It's definitely more of a like loose end for us to build on in the future. So, like, I'm, I'm not gonna say what the next chapters focus on, just to avoid spoilers. But the rings, I you know, will say, aren't going to be like a big factor in them cur currently planned, at least. I also think it was the the name, anyways, was a nod to Fantasy Star. That's one that was actually 
I believe that was pitched by Holly probably a long time ago. So I'd have to check with Holly and see what she is. Yeah, hey, Holly, uh, what's the inspiration there? Let's, uh, let's, co- let's collab with some more real quick for these. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's one of those kind of fun instances of just kind of like, you know, like the collaborative nature of lore and the kind of like, like I don't want to say improv, but like natural kind of organic, you know, evolution of lore on some, you know, areas. Like, you know, once I get into a deal with Holly, like, hey, tell me what you're thinking with the Red Ring of Alteria. We might end up with some really big things we could do, you know, here in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Have you guys had to go back to iterate on slash polish slash change older acts as you want, as you went? And if so, are there plans to redo some of the older acts if time permits in the foreseeable future? So, <laughs> that's a fun question because we have done that quite a lot. Um, like, uh, the game has been available to players, like, through Steam. Oh, I forget when we launched on Steam. Was it 2018 or 2019 that we finally got on Steam? I, I mean, I, like... I mean, you bef- can, you, if you Google as the, book, the it says, like, it has, like, a release date. <laughs> that's, that's the steam beta release date right and like before that we had the uh non-steam client that was available to players for a bit yeah. before that a- april 30th so, 2019 that was the that was the that was the beta on steam release yeah <laughs> so we have revamped a lot of chapters as time has gone on like the most recent chapter revamp, obviously, is chapter one that got a big overhaul in 9.1 that was a very very big chapter overhaul and it was a you know a you know a big way to kind of like bring the beginning of the game up to our current standards the fun fact about that is the chapter one before that the original version of chapter one wasn't the first chapter of the game originally the first chapter of the game was originally what is now chapter two there is a you know version of the game for quite a while where and the story of course where you started in the ruined era you started in last refuge there in the earliest versions of the game's plot every player character is from last refuge and that's a big kind of story pivot we ended up doing when we introduced the original version of chapter 1 because we wanted a different type of start to the game we wanted to start the game that you know introduced the raya you know faction a lot earlier we want to start the game that to show off we, we finally learned how to make grass and trees look good and we're like hey we should show this off way earlier as opposed to going from ruined era to imperial era and then not see you know a pretty tree in you know 20 hours of gameplay yeah. so we uh you know pivoted to making you know turning the original chapter one and chapter two and they made chapter one and chapter one was like that for a few years until we turned it into you know the big overall did recently that's not counting how many times chapter two your first chapter in last refuge has changed over time that's not counting how we took uh let's see here yeah chapter two and three those both have been revamped a couple of times at least like uh there used to be a lot more side quests in chapter three that we trimmed down our place with more interesting things there used to be a lot of side zones in chapter two that were just nothing but a hall of cord or is using the same palette like we have done lots of chapter reworks at this point i believe as far as like development wise the oldest chapters are four five and six as far as like not being touched on heavily with revamps or reworks and we do want to go back and bring those up to our higher you know standards at some point it's just that kind of tricky balancing act of we want to keep on making new stuff in the narrative kind of story wise we want to keep on making new stuff systems wise we want to keep on making new stuff like everywhere and like it, it's hard to find I, the time know, it's, sometimes exactly it's it's hard to find the time where like if, if we if we spent all of our resources on going back and like revamping older content we would never make new content because we'd always find new things to revamp yeah. so we want to it's just a matter of finding the right time to do that that doesn't like delay new content to you know do egregiously okay i think that's a bit of a ramble but i think that answers that question <laughs> that's okay that's good <laughs> uh if, if you guys like rambling you're in for a treat because i can do that so next question thematically as a spellblade can mana strike have elemental conversion other than lightning i think that's been talked about recently hasn't it mike uh yep yeah uh, it, it's uh, we we're, i don't know if we're s- saying uh, anything about it yet but um y- yeah i actually have a ticket on my plate to help with that 
Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, like, uh, I forgot, man. I, I forget which, uh, like, game design discussion it was where that brought, came back up. But yeah, like, it's one of those ones that just kind of comes into conversation every once in a while. But yeah, it's been talked about. I Like Mike said, we don't have any it's on its concrete way. stuff. It, yeah. some, some conversion, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, on to the next one. Okay, now for my lore question. Have you guys ever considered timelines spilling over to other timelines, like Lagan invading Hirat's timeline, for example? Would this be possible or explainable from a lore POV? I love it. So... What we kind of have there is we do have these sort of like what if timelines, like the, uh, you know, what if Herot, you know, became tyrannical and attacked other places, which is our our uh, Age of Winter timeline. We have uh, you know, a few different, you know, timelines in the model of like that. Um, we have, we don't have any like current, like, you know, plans to, you know, have these alternate timelines cross with each other as opposed to like the kind of more standard way of you know them kind of branching off our kind of main timeline we don't have anything in concrete there but that is a kind of like story thread i have been you know thinking about myself for a while like like i can't get into any kind of details of it but like one of the plans i want to mess with like way down the road is very much on that theme of hey what are this other timeline that had the resources to do this on their own went and started poaching other timelines and messing with them. So that is something that has been on my mind. It's not something that's in any of the kind of like currently being worked on kind of narrative thrusts right now, but it is something that I am very much interested in and, you know, down for playing with. Nice. And uh, next question. Hi, probably my question is already answered on the session or some earlier earlier's Q and A. Do you plan some changes on set items? My bad, <laughs> TBH. I would love change level nine COH to get it much quicker, like level four and a fifth. My, what you got? Yeah, so the uh, I, I can't really give any specific details on this right now. We we are um, not in one point one, unfortunately. Uh, we are looking at a pretty big um, shakeup to how set items work and. Uh, you know, you like make them an interesting part of the in-game gearing process. Um, we are also simultaneously for 1.1 looking at some adjustments to uh, the item faction's reward structure, uh, the, like the rank rewards. So, um, you know, like there's there's a bunch bunch of changes there, uh, not just this specific one thing, but there are some changes. Uh, there's like, yeah, the, the the rank rewards for both are getting shuffled a bit and shaken up, and we we learned a lot in this first. Uh, First cycle, so we've, you know, we 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 made a few mistakes, and um, we'll be making some updates to it. And yeah, there's, uh, you'll you'll have to wait a little bit more for the set stuff. Um, but next patch will have some 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 shuffling there. Good answer, Mike. And another question for Mike: Do you ever see? <laughs> it's my <fine>, go <laughs> Here, I'll I'll try and answer it. It might be wrong though. I might question die. for. <laughs> no, 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 focus on here, Rod, I've got this. Question for Kyle instead of Mike now. Do you ever see potential for trade to be opened for items such as runes and glyphs? I oh, God, you did die. <laughs> well, I told you to handle I took this question. Okay, so question for Mike actually now. Do you ever see potential for trade to be opened from items such as runes and glyphs? Items like runes of creation could end up being great to trade. Or do you guys have a hard stance against trade for these items? Right now, uh, it is a firm. We're not planning on trading crafting items. Um, it's not like 100% forever set in stone, no matter what. But uh, for at, at the very least, 1.1, you will not be able to trade those. This this character is so squishy. I don't think this is possible without me like. <laughs> I, I've been too focused on like the questions. What kind of build are you doing right now? Uh, it's it's um. Uh, Ooh, I see the flask, fr frozen flask falcon. Ooh, fun! I love the effect on those. Yeah. All right. Next question: How scalable slash flexible is the skill system? For example, could skill alteration gems be a thing in the future? So, um, Mike could probably be a better one to answer, but I'll take a little crack at it right now while he's dealing with the fearsome, you know, God of Winter. So, the skill system, one of way way back when we were first coming up with the skill system, one of the most appealing facts you know that kind of brought us to want to do it this way even though make putting it together was a lot of work because there are a lot of trees a lot of skills a lot of nodes is oh dang 
Oh, dang. Anyways, uh. is the fact that, like, because they are a bunch of standalone skill trees, we have a million knobs to, you know, twist and play with and just, you know, you know do things with. So it is an inherently flexible system due to the nature that they're all little... Lol, little stuff again. That self-contained systems. Uh, Mike, do you want to get some insight on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically what we already do with um, with 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 items, um, like unique items. So it's it's definitely possible to do. Um, and we, we we have some more plans to expand the skill system and expand how you interact with the skill system. And, um, you know, there's there's one thing we're not short on. It's ideas. Uh, <laughs> so so yeah, there's there's some there's some juice there that's waiting to be explored. But it's um. Uh, yeah, give, give, it, give it a couple patches, you know. So, next question. Are there plans to expand on the lore of the Weavers, or are they just used for the items? So, I'll just say yes on that, <laughs> and move on. <laughs> <laughs> probably smart. Yeah, I. anything I could say to expand on that would probably be too much, but yes. Yeah, uh, you, you, there, there's there's definitely lore around the Weavers. Uh, and, and there's more plans around the Weavers than there are around the Red Ring of Altaria. I will say I'll yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so next question: In the game, there is a dragon mural with two dragons fighting, and I've seen a player with two dragon pets assume Kickstarter or Hydro. Are we going to meet these dragons at some point in the ancient era? And are one of the dragons named Malatros for the newish warlock two-handed sword unique? So. What's the least spoilery way to... <laughs> so, the Ancient Era does have dragons. There are plans to encounter those dragons. Neither of those dragons is Malatros. I think that's the safest way to answer that question. Nice. Malatros is a different dragon than those two dragons. But yeah. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. That's the safest <laughs> way I'm to do it. It's 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 tough when you got when you got plans for a lot of these I know the, I know, don't want to spoil them. It's it's tough. It's it's harder when I know the answer when I don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for the next question. Oh, this is I'm halfway through reading it and this is a follow-up. I'm really interested in the background source origin of Orbis. Is this something that has been explored in game that I may have missed? Or without getting spoilery, is this something that we might be able to look forward to hearing more about in the future, or is that the past? So another, this is another one where the answer is yes. So there are currently planned three more, you know, campaign chapters of you know the main campaign, and the origin of Orbis does come into play within these last three chapters. I'm not gonna say which one of the last three has it, but you do. It is a the origin of Orbis is a question that is answered by the campaign once we have those last three chapters in. And just a note to add in, a lot of people um, I think shortcut the term so it ends up being confused by some people sometimes. Is that the the boss you fight in the mono timelines is the shade of Orbis? It's not Orbis. Yes. So. Yeah. So the shade of Orbis that is a reflection of Orbis's anguish and despair and anger. It's not Orbis himself. It's more so just a kind of a a twisted reflection of him that's being projected into these timelines from the time he was imprisoned and you know it's it's the shades are not orbis i've never seen someone call the shades orbis i'm like ah oh, we should have named it on the slide yeah right <laughs> <laughs> anywho on to the next one will character intros come back once they align with the lore better so Class specific character intros, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, the the, the class the class specific character intros. I don't have a solid answer of a yes or no on there. I will say that fitting the character intros into the spot that they were before would be tricky just due to like the just we don't wanna have you like start the game and pick a character and then have to sit for five minutes as you go through the, the shared intro, then the character intro, and then etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that space is very much taken by our new intro now. But I do like I like our new intro a lot. I I love our new intro a lot. It does a lot of really good things for establishing the lore and what is actually going on when you start the game. I do miss the character specific stories that that slot was taken up by and i do want to do something like you know later on to get those character stories back into the game in some way um this is a 
I don't think this is spoilerly because it's talking about a plan that didn't happen as opposed to something that we're planning. So part of uh, the chapter one overhaul that didn't quite make it in is at that same time, we moved the mastery event from being at the end of chapter three to the end of chapter two because of, you know, the first chapter being longer, maybe we need to move that, you know, forward a bit, just pacing wise. But originally the plan was to also expand that a great deal to where you would actually experience the character backgrounds during the mastery quest where you'd actually, you'd actually go into the primal's backstory and play through it partly and then pick your mastery that ended up just kind of not really being in scope and also would have you know extended the pacing problem of oh you're having to wait even longer to get your mastery. So we ended up kind of keeping it short and sweet where you just, you know, talk to Gaspar and pick your mastery. So we, from the get-go of taking those character enters out, we were already talking about a way to kind of get that backstory back in, which just didn't quite pan out just by the nature of scope and wanted to keep the pacing tight on that stretch. So a uh, short version is, I, I would love to get the character backstories in, back into the game. It would just have to find the right one, right, priority and time to do it and doing it in the right way to where it doesn't like oh god i'm still an eot and i haven't got my mastery yet i want to start putting paladin points somewhere so yeah like it's it's a tricky it's a tricky thing to kind of thread so like some side quest uh, somewhere maybe yeah exactly i would love to, i would love to get those character specific things back in in some way that doesn't intrude on like like i mean People want to get to the end of the campaign and get into Mollus, you know, ASAP anyways, and anything that kind of delays that is like, yes, I have to redeem that. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, on to the next question. <clears throat> what exactly does the power ladder look like with the different gods in Atera? Are Atera and Orbis at the top? Then some unknown ones like Observer, Weaver, Watcher, and then the four lower Majasa, Lagan, Hira, Raya. Where do the ancient dragons and Immortal Emperor fit on the power list? Okay, so let's uh, let's break it down. Power, power to your ranking. You know, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Like, should, should, should we get one of those uh, dumb meme template things where you drag a little pictures there? Would that be fun, actually? That actually would be kind of cool. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, we don't have time to put that together. No. That'd be fun though. <laughs> and that, I mean, help illustrate what I'm talking about. Okay, so. Should I go from bottom up or top? Okay, I'll, I'll do I'll do bottom up. Okay, so I would say there is kind of a gray area at the bottom of this kind of tier list where in the ancient like like I would say the ancient era dragons at their full might and the titans like the stone titan and these other kind of you know like other beings in the ancient era or let's say they all kind of fit into the same kind of ranking at the bottom here, where they're very strong, they are a problem. Them being around is a threat to humans being able to, you know, live and progress in the ancient era and get to the divine era. Like, they're all very strong. The four gods, you know, Majasa, Lagan, Hirat, and Raya, they are above them, but still, you know, wouldn't be able to take them out super easily. The, the gods are definitely, like, there to kind of make it, so that humans can deal with the ancient era dragons and the titans and be able to you know, establish their foothold in the world and progress and everything. And I would say the immortal emperor would be just above the four gods, just by the nature of him, you know, stealing their power and killing them between the divine era and the imperial eras. So, and that itself is kind of a has a bit of a, you know, a spectrum there because the Mother Emperor at his peak, you know, just, you know, freshly having taken the power of all the gods, it would have absolutely been stronger than all of them. And it's a little murkier towards the end of the Pearl Era where that power is kind of rotted and waned inside of him, but he's still, I would say, you know, a notch above the four Divine Era gods just by the nature of he took their powers. They are, you know, they're in him, so he's, you know, inherently a bit above them. And then, uh, so we're at like like the the third kind of tier there with the Middle Emperor and the right below him the Divine Era gods, and then right below that the Titans and the Ancient Era dragons. So at the top above all that is Etera and the Observer, and like uh, yeah, Etera and the Observer right on top of there. And I'm trying to remember something real quick, it's something that's been building on. But yeah, so. 
yeah, like or Orbis, Atera, the, those are on the top above everything else. The Divine Era Gods. Uh, the more important so it would be like Atera and Atera and Orbis, with Orbis being a little bit above, then the Mortal Emperor a good chunk below, and then right below Mortal Emperor would be the Divine Era Gods, then below them would be the Dragons and Titans. Man, maybe we should have gone the tier maker thing. <laughs> I was trying, and I'm like, I've never used this website before. Yeah, There's yeah. ads everywhere. How do I do this? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that, that does a... Oh, I can't annotate on your screen with Twitch. Does Twitch, does, Twitch, does Twitch have a way that I can just draw on your screen? Uh... No, I usually do. I I, I I use like the snipping tool. Just take a screenshot of <laughs> my screen, and then I start drawing on it like this. <laughs> oh, fun! All right, Ooh. so let's make our. No, we don't need to do that. We just went through it. Okay, so, so <laughs> you, you want to yeah, do so, it? I'll, I'll draw it out. <laughs> no, no, we we already went through it. Yeah, I, I think we I think we answered the the question. Someone okay. someone can like. Uh... Take, uh, if you if, if anyone wants to make a version of that, I'll uh, I'll post it next stream, <laughs> and I'll, I'll I'll fact check for you. Yeah. Okay. So next question: In the ruined era, we loot three purple shards as part of the epoch, but the end cinematic only shows two. Considering the end game shards one and two look the same, is that a part of the lore or just an oopsie? It's, okay, that's a, another question after that one. Okay, so in the ruined era, you already have one and two and you're getting the last one in the temple so you had two and you're getting that last piece so i believe if i remember the cinematic correctly yeah you the first you have already combined and you're getting that last piece to kind of complete the whole set so yeah you should there are three parts and you have two of them and you get that last one in the temple two of them are just already put together but it, it they, they're just put together so well that it looks like one piece yeah and it's real and we have the next one. Are there any plans to streamline corruption farming in a group setting? As a sense, it seems very incomplete and imbalanced, favoring only the group lead slash spending boss fight stability without gaining gazes of Orbis. Uh, I'll leave that to you, Mike. I don't get into endgame enough. <laughs> yeah, we do. We, we have... We How do I phrase this? We're aware that this is an issue, and we have a plan to help alleviate it. Um, the plan is not just straight, like, everything's shared, done. Um, but we, we we've got something we want to try first, um, and you know we'll we'll look for feedback on it, and if it's not working the way we want it to work, we'll change the system and do something else. Uh, but yes, we, we are aware that this is um, causing some grief for some people, and uh, we do want to we want to you know make it not do that for them. I'd say that's a good answer. All right, next question. Is the Void a byproduct of using the Epoch or time travel? It does only really appear after the Epoch starts being used and is similarly co coveted by Void entities. Also, the only Void class, Void Knight, is really the only class that has time travel abilities. So, I would say it's less a byproduct of the Epoch and time travel, and more so that they are very inseparable. It's, it's less one creating the other, and more so them being part of the same power source. Like uh, the power of you know time travel and the epoch, it has a very similar origin as the void. They are very connected in that sense. So it's less about one being the byproduct of the other, and more so them being part of the same power. But not the and... one power. I not getting the reference you're making. <laughs> What's the one power? It's, it's the like the the source of power in the wheel of time. I haven't read those. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I got half of there's, the there's like four people out there that were like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I really should read them. I've always heard good things about them. I just see that it's, what, like uh, 20 books long and they're all like. Uh, man, I need to get back into reading because I haven't read consistently since I had a, a job where I could just watch the door and read while waiting for people to come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I started watching the show, and some, someone on here was like, you gotta read the books, and I'm like, I've read most of the first one now, so I haven't read that much of it. Um, and uh, they were right. Oh my god, a lot was changed. <laughs> <laughs> I might just stick with the show. Is that the one that has, like, the troll orcs that are trolls and orcs? Yeah, Trollocs. Trollocs. I, 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 sh I shouldn't be 
poke a fun at a, at a name. I, I didn't write, I haven't read it. <laughs> I really no, want this no. crit multi here, but like my void res is such garbage that like I feel like I kind of need it. I mean, did you die against Void Arya? No, but... Uh... This sounds like your Void res is good to me. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're not dying, do you really need defense? I mean, I'm dying horribly to a lot of things, and I'm severely <laughs> overleveled for this fight. <laughs> But did you die this time? No. <laughs> that sounds good to me. All right. <laughs> okay, next question. I love this game so much. Thank you. I love you too. I stopped playing because war seems mandatory after reaching 350 corruption if I want to progress. Will other options be viable for survivability? All right, Mike, what's your take on ward balance? Yeah, so we are, we, like, yes, ward, ward goes burr, uh, and it goes burr to, to burr, uh, and we're gonna we're, we are adjusting the balance of ward relative to the other uh defenses 350 is a very successful build though so like um don't sell yourself short where you are and uh but yeah, yeah we, we are uh very aware that ward is king right now like i said earlier are you dying <laughs> if yes then maybe a little more until you stop dying but if you're not dying i just get more crit multi <laughs> Oh, I okay. love this shield. It's it's not really useful right now, but I love it. <laughs> I love the art on it. It's yeah. so cool. Okay, next question. Mike has also said a few times that Majasta isn't going to be a monolith boss because of story reasons. Yeah. What is the story reason? Is it I never, I never know be... how to answer that part of the question. <laughs> so, is it because she seems to be the only one that needs that? So... I, 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 I hate to contradict Mike, but oh, it's less... You told me this! I did I? Yeah. I don't think. I, don't I, think I, I, I did. Be, I could be wrong. I, I'll, I'll take the hit on this one. Go ahead. Like, there's. Yeah, there's no reason Majasa couldn't be a Moloth boss. Like we have a Lagan as a Moloth boss, as a Moloth boss. We have Hirod as a Moloth boss. It's really just a you know, we don't want to have. We've talked about adding more timelines to the Monolith, like we have 10 right now, but you know, whenever we bring up that idea, like, oh, let, maybe, you know, in this patch cycle we could add, you know, an extra timeline or two, it kind of, you know, ends up going, well, 10's actually, we don't want to go much higher than that as far as more timelines go, because that would kind of extend out the kind of in-game progression, like, it would it'd make it even longer to get to Empowered Monoliths, which, you know, like, that's a, a bit of friction. We're not sure that we want to make more frictiony. We don't want, not sure we want to increase the grit on that sandpaper. So, yeah. one thing that we've talked about in the you past, the grit, that, though, wouldn't it? I don't work with wood enough to know if I <laughs> use that analogy correctly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we don't know. If we want to increase the grit. It's, whichever. I, I I need to make someone with the wood before somebody can sandpaper low, low, puns. Lower, lower grit's rougher. Puns. Higher grit's smoother. Uh, Mike, could you make me something? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Could you make me just a block <laughs> of wood? <laughs> Sand it to perfection. Anyways, uh, what's the question again? Okay, so, yeah. I, I yeah, I, I, there's no explicit lore reason why Majasa isn't a Moloth boss, but Lagan and Hira are. It's more so, we've talked about adding extra timelines to the Moloth. We've kind of gone, said no to that, just we want to make the, you know, Grind to get them powered any longer. One thing we talked about in the past, and we haven't, you know, talked about super recently, is the idea of like swapping out certain timelines for new ones for certain like cycles or certain patches. Like let's say let's uh, let's take the Lagan one and place it with the Majasa one for like a patch or two. We've talked about stuff like that, though we've never really kind of like bitten the bullet on it. So, like, uh, yeah, uh, unless I'm forgetting something horribly, there's no real story reason why Majasa can't be a model of the bosses. More so. Do we want to add an extra timeline? Eh, not this patch. Do we want to swap out a timeline? Eh, not this patch. And just kind of, you know, landed on that side of that question or, you know, up till now. Or I apologize to everyone I said that too, which is a lot of people. I apologize <laughs> for past to me who might have said something like that because I cannot remember. If I did, I do not remember at all why I would have said that. Yeah, no worries. Anyways, on to the next question. How are the devs organized when they have disputed all over the world? Do they have different day-night cycles, and how does it affect work? Uh, Mike, I'll let you take that one, though I will say I don't talk to our sound, our main sound designer near enough. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, every time I do, I just, you know, man, Australia, I need to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it, it is tricky, because, yeah, like, there are people everywhere. Like, there's the sun never sets on Last Epoch's development. 
and it's because we do have people all over the world and it can be tricky sometimes most people um most people work primarily in like a north america uh like like normal business hours uh time frame and, and there's like so there's some variation there forward and backwards a little bit and like um you know certain roles it it's it, it doesn't you don't uh, work as directly uh day to day with, with other people as much so it's easier to to work um on different time uh time zones and things like that but for the most part most of us work like north america uh regular business hours and um like most of the people who are like there's a lot of people we have working in europe um, some of them work on a European biz business hour schedule. Some of them work on North American, um, so they just like stay up really, really late, um, which works great for some people and really terrible for other people. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 tricky sometimes. Um, my my favorite example of the kind of like weirdness and kind of like like f funniness of of this kind of thing is a uh, a lot of times when we do like recording sessions for VA, okay, the uh, the the VA person is somewhere in Europe and you know. I'm in North America. Our, you know, our sound designer to make sure that the tech side of things all sounding clear is Australia. Like, man, someone is gonna be up at a weird hour for all three of us to be in the same call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 tricky, but like, I don't know. It, it, I think because we've done this from day one, like from from absolutely day one, there was there was someone in actually like day one, day one, there was someone in Europe, there was someone in Asia, there was someone in North America. And it's like, um, it, it, it it's it becomes just part of the I don't know uh, the way we do things, and so it's I don't know it, it, I guess we've gotten good at it over the years. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we started as a remote company company, and there's kind of like there's never been any kind of like oh we're having to shift to working with people in different time zones because we've always worked with people in different time zones. Yeah. Okay, next question. Hero has a spear. What are the other gods' weapons? So, Hero is actually fairly unique in this case. He didn't always have that spear. That spear is something that he crafted later on in you know, when he was having to deal with Mortatus, his son, and when his, Mortatus rebelled, and he you know made that in conjunction with the other gods. So, you know, one of the gods having a weapon like that is actually something that is unusual compared to the others. So Hirot is unique in that sense that he has that spear. And, you know, some could say that it actually kind of, you know, makes him closer to humanity, which can be seen as a negative. Say, Raya would look down on Hirot for, you know, having a spear and, you know, feeling the need to use a weapon as opposed to, this, you know, their own power. Like, Raya, for example, would look down on Hirot for having to use a weapon. So Hirot is the only one that has a weapon, and... That's because he didn't start with it. He created it for a purpose, and that was to imprison Mortatus, who rebelled against him. All right, next question. Would it be possible to add a sound and or map marker for loot that makes it through the filter? This can be helpful for those with more mobile builds with stricter filters. Mike, I'll let you take that one. Um, there, th this, this, this is a tricky one. We've been trying to figure out how to solve this problem for a while. Um, we're not keen on the idea of um, uh, allowing just a tick box in the filter to say, um, you know, like, uh, give, give it the, the, um, unique treatment where it's like, it gets a, a special sound and a drop icon on the menu. We're, we're, we're very hesitant to do that. And we're trying to explore other ways to solve this problem first. It'd be the short answer. Sure, my, 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 my reaction when you started answering that, if anyone saw it was, I was just because we get this question a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> sell it once and for all. Is the Immortal Emperor Grail or Mortatus? I am not <laughs> going to sell it once and for all. Moving on. <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but I'm going to refrain from. You'll okay, find well, out let's, by let's, the. Yeah. Mm -hmm? I was going to say, let's rephrase yeah. the question. Does, Will you like, ever uh, settle this? I, yes. It is, it is a. It is an actual answered, like, known thing. Like, it's been a known thing since the inception of the character. But the players will get that reveal of who the Mortal Emperor was before he was the Mortal Emperor within one of the next three campaign chapters. Beautiful. Okay. Next question. What is the stance on a mercenary slash follower slash combat pet? 
I think they're neat. Mike, what do you I, think? I love this question because I always get the answer, we already have one. And everyone's like, what are you talking <laughs> about, Mike? And I'm like, that um, Melvin Mervin's writ. Uh, I love uh, that item. The, 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 the relic that goes here and it gives you a um, a crossbow mercenary. So I, I still think it should like deduct one gold every time it fires a crossbow bolt. <laughs> I, I simultaneously <laughs> love and hate that. Um, I, I, it's, I think that a mercenary... Um, system works really well if you design the game with that mercenary system in mind as you're designing the game um we've kind of a lot of the stuff we've designed with the game um has is, especially a lot of stuff around pets has specifically been um knowing that we didn't have that system and and knowing that we weren't planning on adding that system um so i, I think it's it's unlikely that we would add something like that at least anytime soon but um I definitely don't want to say impossible because it does add a really nice secondary avenue for gearing. One of the things I really love about Diablo 2's itemization is that there are these, um, there's, there's this whole class of items that uh, is terrible for players, but due to some, uh, I, I, I think, um, quality of life changes that they made to um, pro probably latent development of, uh, I'm purely speculating here, but I'm assuming that they were playing with mercenaries and Mercenary's gear was breaking, and they're like, this is terrible, because um, you don't know when it breaks, it's not in your face, and then they were like, okay, let's just make it so the mercenary gear can't break. And then suddenly, that this that, that like one tiny little thing has this cascading effect of like, suddenly this whole class of ethereal items are um, unbelievably awesome for mercenaries. And, you know, like, sorry, I'm just rambling a bit, but yeah, there's there's that, um, that interesting, the fact that there's these ethereal items that are really good for mercenaries means that there's this whole new class of items that are useful and interesting to pick up and things like that. So... Um, I, I, that's one of the reasons why I think that they work so well in Diablo 2 um, and that type of feeling is something that would be great to, to get into Last Epoch but uh, we don't have any plans for it and it, it is a pretty significant adjustment that would end up being made if we, if we did that so maybe but no plans to I think if we should anytime any of them, attack, any of them attacks it should deduct one gold <laughs> Alright, next question. Any plans to streamline the legendary item crafting process? Fighting jeweler every time I want to slam a one LP item seems a little excessive. Mike, do you think that's a little excessive? No, I think it's perfect. Um, I do think, however, that there are issues with dungeons themselves that are making this feel worse. Um, and we are addressing those issues. Um, uh, I was going to say a time frame, and then I'm like, I don't know the time frame that we're addressing these in, but... Uh, at some point, I don't want to say too soon as and be wrong. Possibly quite soon. <laughs> Next question. Are we ever going to meet some of the other NPCs that Uniques are named after, like Artor or Faribor, Isadora, etc.? Um, I'll say yes and y yes on some, potentially later for others. It's one of those things where, like, will we you know, want to introduce a new NPC for like a new system or just a you know part a new part of the game like we have this big treasure trove of NPCs reference through you know uniques that we can just dive into and go okay what do you want to do with this what what story on here do you want to expand on so like nothing I don't want to say any of those are set in stone but like whenever we add new stuff like it's very likely that we'll dip into those and you know mess with them a bit so I want I want to do some of our tour as well and yeah like it's a non-committal probably and I think there's also important <laughs> to note that some of the some of the names that appear on items are are like um, supporters and backers who have mm -hmm. like their like their gamer handle in there or their real name in there in some cases too so it's the odds of meeting Aaron the <laughs> Golemancer are low. Unfortunately, yeah. do do the name defend the name Aaron's. It's it's very explicitly a dude. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I was gonna say. So yeah, there's there's a few of them that are probably won't be. All right, next question is Isadora a vampire? With a stake they killed her and silver they bound her. So, I don't I, I'm not sure I want to use the explicit term vampire because we haven't dipped into that kind of you know part of the lore too deep yet. But I will say that. The Immortal Empire did not invent necromancy. Before the Immortal Empire, 
necromancer was a thing throughout the divine era and even earlier in the ancient era by you know, like uh someone mentioned maltros the dragon earlier that's referenced on one of the warlock uniques so that's that's an example of the fact that even like back in the ancient era like certain powerful dragons could dip into you know necromancy as a type of magic they could you know mess with there are you know vampire like undead you know hiding in the shadows in you know different eras that you know like there's a source for where the acolyte learned her dark arts in the divine era for example so the mortal empire doesn't have a monopoly on undead stuff it's just that the unstuff undead stuff kind of had to be way more in the shadows until the mortal empire came and made it very you know normalized and accepted throughout the world so vampires exist even if whenever we you know go all out and introduce them, we call them something different. Alright, so next question. Is there, or unless, uh, Mike, you want to add something on that point? No, I just thought it was cool. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, uh, so, yeah, there, there there are various types of undead. It's just, they kind of have to hide in the shadows away from society until the little empire made society undead. <laughs> nice. Is there any plans for effects on some skills to buy an item shop? Will be very cool to add. Mike, want to take that one? I feel like that's a. Uh, I'll let you answer that one. For effects on some skills to buy an item shop? For a skill in TX. Oh, 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 yes, yes. Sorry, wow. I completely forgot about. Like, uh, NTX stuff. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes, they're, they're, you can see them. You can see them right here, is the, uh, the slots that they will be. Uh, be put in, and you can see there's like some some placeable UI that's uh, will be functional once they're in the game. But yes, which I'm just realizing yeah, we... now, uh, I'm not used to having a uh, a window over my my right hand side of my screen, like a, web, a second webcam there, so people can't really see this very well. But you can see a little bit. There's 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 more there behind Kyle. <laughs> it's it's right here, here, and here. <laughs> here, here. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, it's. They've been tricky to get working, but it's something we want to do. Yeah. Alright, next one. Happy Friday! Happy Friday to you too. You guys rock. You rock as well. Wanted to ask, are there any plans to enable item transmog with in-game items? I guess the system is already there with the MTX Cosmetics tab. Will it be possible to include the in-game items there as well upon Shedder or something like that? Also, please make it available in online as well. Offline as well. Thanks! Thanks to you. Uh, Michael, let you take that one. Yeah, uh, we, we are working on a transmog system right now. Um, I don't have an ETA on it or exactly the, the like method that it'll be. So, so there's, there's a lot of different transmog systems that have come through different games. Um, some of them like require a like an item to be like to enable the transmog. Some, some of them like need to like extract that view over, off of them. Some of them, some games like uh, Diablo 3 was unbelievably open for this. It was just like, have you ever picked up an item with that? as like the base model great you can just switch to it no problem um and then there's like the far other extremes it's like there's a like a, a five dollar item you have to buy from the, the shop and it, it it only works one time and you know like so, so there's there's like extreme examples uh both ways and we are uh we're, we're still deciding exactly how that's going to roll out um but we are we are working on a transmog system right now I don't know we'll call it transmog. I think that's just straight up a WoW term. We'll probably call it something else. But that's what we just... That's what everyone calls it anyways. <laughs> I, I think that's a, a pretty generic just like video game term now, isn't it? I mean, have any other games used the explicit term transmog? Because I know, uh, I know Final Fantasy XIV uses the term glamour. Uh, I forget what uh, Path of Exile does for their kind of equivalent there. I, I don't know actually like the word transmog is used in anywhere besides World of Warcraft. I might be wrong. But I, uh, double three probably does, but that's because yeah. they're also Blizzard. Yeah, I, I I probably just got my Blizzard goggles on, so it's I I just yeah. <laughs> I mean, very reasonable goggles to have. They it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next question: Who or what exiled the exiled mages in the prisons? So <clears throat> the exiled mages were concepted around the same time that we were really getting deep into the Rune Master, like you know, creation and you know, really fleshing them out. The the ones who exiled the exiled mages are certain very powerful rune masters that 
at least started out as being associated with Warwind, but have kind of gone out and kind of started doing their own thing. They are a, a side of the lore that, you know, I want to dip into more as time goes on, but pretty much the uh, Room Masters and Walren were experimenting with way, experimenting with time travel, honestly, experimenting with like, trying to, you know, dip into the same kind of research that Jolra was doing down in, you know, you know, down in the south of Majasa, and they're kind of where they kind of hit their brick wall with that. It was making these these little prisons that would send a person one way to somewhere that they didn't quite know where they'd end up, but they couldn't come back. So with, you know, their kind of failed attempt at making time travel really just resulting in a box, you stuff someone in and they go somewhere and never come back. Like, hey, we can use this to get rid of people we don't like. So they started just using that as a way to exile dangerous mages that they didn't want to just stuff into a prison or kick out of, you know, kick out of their, you know, full mage club and just like, hey, we we dislike you enough or think you're dangerous. We want you to go somewhere and never come back. So they stuff them into these prisons and activate them and they just get sent off somewhere random in time and place and stay trapped never to come back again until, you know, a random traveler you know, knocks on it, and then whoops, here's a insane mage breaking out who's been trapped in there for who knows how long. But uh, there are, I want to dip into these, you know, these room masters who made these prisons more later in the future in some sort of like side system. So yeah, there's, I want to do some more cool stuff there, but yeah, like w wizards found a way to make a go away forever box and did that to people they don't like. Typically other mages. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Next question. I have a question about quality of life. Have you thought to add custom sounds to the fill oh sounds filter sounds again. So that we will know when something some amazing exalt item appeared on the map out of sight or maybe an additional marker on the map and have you thought about the possibility to search in the filters by percentage of statistics? I think we answered something very similar to this earlier though, Mike, if there's any other kind of yeah, it's, like new wants you want to add on to it, go notes. Not not really. It's the same as what we answered already. Um we yeah, th th there's there's definitely a problem here. Uh we don't have a great solution for it yet. We're working on it. All right, next question. Does each timeline have its own epoch? And the trailer shows multiple player characters at Terra's temple. The traveler has failed in other timelines and are killed in the Void Winds. Are those the timelines we are correcting? So I will say that yeah, every alternate traveler, aka like every like other player in the game, does have their own epoch just by nature of, you know, how every player is going through that, you know, the timeline like that. But... As of yet, every timeline ends in the Ruined Era with, you know, a dead failed traveler and, you know, the Epoch kind of not really amounting anything. But, you know, maybe you, the player, will be, you know, the traveler who doesn't die and saves, you know, saves the reality in the Terra with the Epoch. Maybe you are the one who will finally defeat Oribus. As long as you keep on playing and you stay strong and you are the hero. So, I got real too into the whole pointing of the camera gimmick. Let me uh, rethink if I actually answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I think I answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but yes, other, e other travelers have the epoch, but all travelers up till now have failed and the ruin never happens. But the story might be the story about the traveler who avoids that fate. Nice. It might be you. No, not you, not you. It could be you, not you. Not, maybe you, though. <laughs> I, 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 I watched too much Spawning Friends and the little bits where they'll just quickly point at the camera. Kills me every time. Nice. Anyways, next question. <clears throat> How many other Titans are there? You are very specific to say Stone Titan. So Stone Titan is the mountain beneath the uh, the boss of the Lila's Arbor. I, I still just call him Stone Titan just due to, like, early dev name and just that's the name that's been lodged into my gray matter so i can't really put a hard number how many times there are the term tie-in really uh, just applies to these this kind of class of creature of being of monster that kind of became 
ubiquitous with the ancient era. The, the ancient era has a lot of these big, huge creatures, and part of the transition from the ancient era to the divine era and humanity and the gods kind of taking their place in the world is humanity and the gods clearing out the titans and the dragons so that, you know, humanity could make towns and actually survive long enough to get civilization going without having to be afraid of getting stomped by a big stone monster or being in by a big crystal worm or, you know, getting, you know, wrapped up in webs by some kind of big spider. Like, the titans are a classification of giant ancient era monster that was a had to be taken care of before humanity could really get its, you know, get its momentum going. And the Stone Titan is notable for being, like, as far as anyone knows, the only Titan to survive all the way to the Ruined Era just by, like, slumbering down, like, you know, in an underground cave for so long. Uh, Micah Gritton, what's up? Every time you say Titan... It's cheesing. Every it's cheesing. Wait, it's cheesing me. <laughs> every time you said Titan, I, I was hearing the word tie-in. Like, it's a tie-in oh, to no. something. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make... Oh, he's Titan. Dangle fast. I'm going to go to Texas. I'm South Axe. I'm going to boom I'm going to go to my fast, man. Anyways. That was great. Thank you. It's funny. I had that little bit of accent sometimes. But, you know, whole time, you know, growing up down here in Texas, people will ask me, hey, where are you from? It's like, I'm from here. I just talk weird i don't know what it is <laughs> there's this one lady at my old job who came in and she asked if i was from scotland and i was just in a weird mood that day and i just said yes I just rolled <laughs> it. yes and she she asked if i like was from a certain part of it i was like oh yeah i was up there you know i got some family up there i just i just lied to this poor old woman and she probably went to her grave thinking that she met this kind irish boy you know what? getting a smoothie there's worse things in the world than than having a nice encounter with someone that maybe wasn't oh, God, entirely I... real. Uh, you know, thank you for putting that relief on my heart. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, next question. The gods are able to impart immortality to others? Question mark Like Mortatus, or like Lagan when he says he controls Liath's, Liath's life as well. Is this immortality connected to how the immortal emperor has extended it to all the skeletons? Yes. So... One of the kind of hallmarks of like divine power and divinity is its ability to extend out the lifespan of someone, extend out, you know, prevent death and make people live far, you know, beyond, you know, their normal lifespan to be able to come back and stick around. That like Liath is hundreds of years old, in fact. Um and the Immortal Emperor and his ability to, you know, raise the dead in mass and keep them around for long, long, long time is very much connected to the fact that he has stolen the power of, you know, all the Divine Era gods. So, a big old yes. And next question. Are you planning to implement a corruption catch-up system where the old characters don't have to grind through from zero? I'll let you take that one, Mike. Yes. Good answer. <laughs> uh, it was. It was. The question was worded vaguely enough that I could say yes. Um, it, it's, it's. It's. You know. It's in the no specifics yet. We're still working on it. We're still fleshing it out. All that sort of stuff. But yeah. It's. This is the. Like alts. Alts have an issue. This, I, I went to this. I did a whole like drawing thing on the screen last time. And oh my god. Oh, it's not that bad. Hmm. Um, the. Lots of times, alt characters, especially for very enfranchised players. Um, you end up in long stretches of non-difficult content, uh, like just 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 rolling over everything to get to the hard stuff, to get to the fun stuff. Um, and so we want to uh, we, 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 we want to fix that. Which speeding up corruption and alts is the ways to do that. Good answer. All right, next one. When we go get Hierot's spear, Mortis seemingly being sustained by the spear. There are also what looks like soul jars there as well. Are the gods sustaining themselves in a similar way through soul jars, or is this just for Mortis? Or are they immortal in their own way, only killable by another god? So, there are kind of uh, multiple questions going on here. So, the people being sus sustained in the uh, frozen roots, in the, uh, the, uh, 
the two Immortatus. Those aren't connected to sustaining Immortatus. Those are actually just other humans that were who rebelled alongside Immortatus. So, and here Rot froze them there to kind of keep them imprisoned without killing them. And Kirat's spear is kind of what's keeping Mortis in stasis and keeping him in prison there. And they are... Their immortality there is another kind of reflection of how the gods can impart immortality, but through Hirot being kind of a little misguided in his sense of mercy, he... One of the things that kind of brought Hirot into conflict with Raya is that Hirot asked for help from the gods in making the spear in order to deal with his son Mortis who rebelled. And Raya was very much on the camp of, hey, okay, I'll help you with this problem because you're too weak to solve it yourself, but you gotta make sure to kill that guy so the problem's solved. And Hirot did it. Hirot kept Mortis imprisoned in the tomb of Mortis with the spear keeping him, you know, you know, imprisoned and in stasis rather than dead, and Priya saw that as a sign of weakness from Hirot. And, you know, it could be arguable whether Hirot was being merciful or naive or weak or kind. Like, there's... It depends on how you read that, but yeah, he had Amortis you know, frozen and imprisoned in there rather than, you know, killing him. And he did it the same. He did the same to a bunch of heroes, a bunch of Mortis's followers who were also imprisoned in that tree. And I hope I hope that answers the question. I kind of got into the into the you know, weeds, kind of talking about the kind of what does Raya think about this? This guy who wasn't <laughs> even in the question, but I mean, Raya would be happy with that. He likes being he likes playing important. <laughs> Next His question. Personality's coming through just in this. Yeah, R R Raya is very judgmental and very. Yeah. But anyways, anyways, I, 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 I've had some future chapters in mind lately, so that's kind of coming up. Earlier, you had said the Epoch and the Void were connected. Is Orbis just a future slash alternate version of ourselves that was corrupted by the Void or the Epoch? I'll go ahead and say I, I'm tempted to you know do the whole mm, you'll have to find out thing, but I will say that the player is not Orbis. I, I, I'll build. I can say that. You know, confidently. I'm not gonna say, you know, more details on, you know, or just straight up copying Diablo One's plot. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I, I like to avoid spoilers and kind of keep some mystery around things. But I can, I can say, you know, without too much worry. Yeah, the player is not all of this. Back to the power ladder. Let's get on that ladder and power on. Where does the weaver fit in this? Oh, the power ladder. Fit is that, that kind of power ladder. I thought we were talking about like bounce or something. <laughs> okay. Where does the weaver fit in this space? What are her powers besides making items that can never roll properly? Well, the the weaver is an interesting example, and she has a. A connection to she, she's a special case and we'll find we'll be able to talk more about her sometime in the future I will say that she is above the I'll, I'll, I'll say that due to stuff she is above the gods but not above orbs or so yeah I think that's a, probably the most comfortable place I can say love it Okay, next question. Will there be a chance in the future to have a prefix slash suffix on gear that allows for a chance on hit for minions to taunt the enemies? I ask because if lightning wolves and the retaliation damage and items like the West Wind Helmet where minion retaliation is a part of the items of for pretty much, will we ever add a affix that gives minions taunt on hit? Yeah. Um, it's a cool idea. It, it is the way taunt works... The, the, we, we don't really have, um, like, I'm taunting you. I have, we have, I'm taunting! Uh, and it, 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 it kind of just goes everywhere. Because the way, the way taunt actually works in Last Epoch is really weird. Um, it makes the AI think that object is huge. Like, like really, really huge. Um... And when when the, because it, it thinks it's so huge, uh, the targeting system is all done by distances, and it's like, oh, this thing's like on top of me. This thing's like 
taking up the same amount of sp like the same space as I'm taking up. So it is the highest possible target that I can have. Um, and it attacks that thing. So it's, uh, it, the only way we could do something like that would, would have to be like a chance to taunt, like a, a triggered chance to taunt everything when you hit. And, uh, it's, it, it has the potential to make, um, uh, and enemies behave really strange, especially with minions. Um, I think it's more likely that we would see um, more more like specific minions. Because also having squirrels do that doesn't make it as, where near, as much sense as like um, uh, a bear. So it's uh, probably more minion specific taunting stuff is possible than uh, generic enemies. Mm. Good answer. I don't want to see a poor little squirrel get creamed by an enemy because you have taunt on hit. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next question. Considering the four gods have a set deviation from the uh, cardinal points, would it be possible to assume that maybe some minor gods or half-siblings could arise at the intercardinal points? So, I will say that the like the intercardinal points aren't an explicit like slot for other gods to exist in, but there are like there there are some minor gods and other kind of you know beings that are you know have a similar kind of like relation to the gods that you know some are missing some just haven't been you know important enough for the story to really touch on them before there are there are other there are other continents besides the one you see in the game as well there there is a lot more room for gods and minor gods than just our main four. It's just that our main four are the most important ones for the game's story and the continent that the game takes place in. So there is room for these other kind of minor divine figures. It just, I wouldn't say that they are explicitly tied to the like cardinal points or intercardinal points. So yeah, there, there's room for some like minor, you know, divine figures to, you know, come up in the story as well. Okay, and on to the next question. Is the Time Lost Coliseum, aka, you know, Last Epoch PvP, still something we could see in Last Epoch? And, uh, Mike, I'll let you take that one, if you don't mind, because I'm going to drink some pineapple flavored water out of my comically large Yeti jug. <laughs> um, PvP is still something that's possible for us to do. Uh, it's it's not actively being worked on right now. I can tell you that. Um, but it is it is like uh, you know it's yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with it. I I I would love to get PvP in. Um, if, if I just say it's coming here and then we'll be like, well, we we said we do. We gotta do it now. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny trick to getting stuff done. No. Um, it's. It is it is something that we we've we've talked about for a long time. It was part of our original designs uh, pre Kickstarter as like like oh we, we wouldn't it be great to do PvP all that sort of stuff. So like it's 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 in our like our our dream version of Last Epoch includes PvP, but we don't have any specific uh, details on how that's or when that's gonna look. Chat, I don't know about you, but I feel both enlightened and refreshed. <laughs> On to the next question. Is there a future plan to incorporate post-level 100 experience outside of re-specializing skills? Not really. Um, we, f we feel level 100 is a very significant achievement unto itself, and uh, progression post that point is more about um, secondary systems and, like... Improving your gear, um, doing like completing other endgame content, uh, and and some other stuff maybe. Um, it probably won't be directly just experience. Like we, we don't have any plans for a paragon system. Like, most most players aren't expected to hit uh, level one hundred. Like it's 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 a we expect characters to like be able to be like like oh this character's finished. I I completed this character. Um, to what I find complete to this, because you know, you're really complete a character, but like I have, I feel like I've completed this character. Um, we want that to be possible before level 100. Um, so the, the direct power granted from a system like that, if we did something like that, would have to be like tied. probably wouldn't feel fantastic. So it's it's more likely getting something like that to be tied to 
like end game progression than experience. Okay, here's an idea. You make a a void version of Melvin's writ that summons a a like void knight mercenary. And every time he shoots across with a bolt, it takes away one experience. You know, I, I knew as soon as you said void of that, I'm like, I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> Hard no. No systems that remove XP. Deal with it. If it is an obvious, if it is an obvious that one of my favorite things to do in uh, game design meetings is to uh, throw out insane bad ideas. And, you know, sometimes it might spur a discussion that leads to something cool. Yes, which it does. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Oh. On to the next question. Any thoughts on the sticky issue with hitboxes? For example, when fighting Emperor of Corpses, sometimes I can't move around him. Feels like I'm stuck or sliding around the boss instead of moving. Uh, it's a tricky one, I think, for either of us. I think it's more like a like a monster like design question or just kind of like a gameplay. Like, uh, any, any thoughts on that, Mike? Not off the top of my head. There's yeah. there's, there's probably some. It's, it's it's I doubt it's intended to be that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, like it's it's something that a... yeah, it's, it's something that I have no doubt is being worked on. It just I think it is one of those unfortunate things that kind of falls outside of either of our departments. <laughs> Anywho, onto the but but yeah, like it's it's something that like should be better, and we you no know, definitely we're gonna try and make it better. Um, next question. You said Mortatus was Hirot's son. Are there other children of the gods out and about? The main other example of that would be the fact that Apophis is technically the daughter of Majasa. And every vessel mating before her was also a daughter of Majasa. That's the main other example of children of the gods. Um, that is not to say that... I would, I would say that... Yeah, Maj Majasa and Hirot would be the only ones interested in in Hirot's case interested in humanity enough to have a, to have a you know a child and in Majasa's case interested in her own kind of you know, continuing her own you know power and presence to have a child via the, like, these vessel maidens a Lagan would be too much in his own just kind of domain just Again. causing storms to entertain himself and not really you know thinking outside of himself enough to try and go and have a child and Raya is far too like arrogant and narcissistic to you know want to give up any of his power in that sense. So I would say yeah the only notable ones would be Mortis on Hero's side and Apophis on Majasa's side. Nice. And up next, will there be an implementation on tweaking the loot filter to sort out uniques with different legendary potentials? Pretty much a legendary potential in the loot filter. Any uh thing to add in on there, Mike? Um You know, I I think that that uh community persistence can often bring about change sometimes. But uh, no comment. My my eye just drifted to the uh, chat and saw a uh, response to the uh, you know my answer about the children of the gods saying that uh, from Inspector Eliath is kind of like an adopted child of Lagan whether or not Lagan would recognize or agree that's actually a very good insight there that's actually a very good example Eliath could be considered an adopted daughter of Lagan but in the sense of oh I have to go do the taxes for my dad because he can't be asked to do it himself and oh I need to go you know, mow his lawn because he won't stop looking at it you know his figurine collection to go mow it himself so Leath isn't happy about it but Leath could be considered an adopted child of Lagan that's actually a really I hadn't considered that exact like perspective of it so actually yeah I like that a lot that's actually a very good point very good example on to the next question. Would you consider to change Golden Resonance to be able to trade Exalted items too? Non-tradable items at least slash buff the big resonance. We've got 15 gold to drop versus one big one. I, uh, I, pretty much as in a way you could buff Golden Resonances. I think it's like the kind of distilled kind of idea there. I think it's more likely to have the um, Obsidian Resonance. Is that what it was? I don't know. I'm only remembering the internal name right now. I think changing, uh, increasing the drop around, that's more likely. Like we, we're we're playing with that. We've got some changes, uh, some some PRs that are 
in review right now along those lines, but uh, nothing specific yet. Might have to drop something. Maybe. Next question. Any plans to add boss voice lines in chat during the fight? Notice it with the gun, and to me, is it quite enjoyable and more immersive? Yes, actually. Like, uh, we did a big pass on adding those kind of chat voice, or those chat lines for bosses, like, right in the kind of run-up to 1.0. Uh, any spots where we miss that, we do plan to go back and hit that there, and we want that to continue to kind of be, like, a standard of the system going forward. So, really, it's kind of a matter of kind of going back and seeing the spots we missed on that. But, yeah, as, as a standard thing for, like, all future bosses, we're going to try and have those chat lines for the VA lines. Because, yeah, we are very happy with how that came together. It's just a matter of kind of hitting those holes we missed and making sure it stays part of the kind of implementation standards yeah and boots next got question terrible what's that i just got some terrible boots i was hoping for something new <laughs> nah. uh speaking of fashion when will hoodies be available in store for last epoch um i don't have a clear answer for that i mean i want them. I get, the one i got sent I want was too the the one i got sent was too small same my, my, my wife same. took it i don't have one myself i need apparently like uh, I don't know, a, a 8XL or something? Because, like, I think it was I'm, tiny. I'm yeah, I, I saw, like, uh, the size printed on the one that I was sent was, like, the right size I requested, but it was so small. It's like, is this, like, what cut is this? Yeah. <laughs> I, like, uh, my, my, my others are the same size. Fit. Well, I mean, do I need to start hitting the gym more? I started getting all self-conscious and stuff. <laughs> no, I, I put it I put it down on, on, a, on my bed next to another hoodie that's, like, got the same size, and I'm like, this is, this is legit 20% smaller. <laughs> <laughs> So once we figure out these sizing issues, we might start being able to sell hoodies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a sub! Ooh, Thank you hello! Am hello, I... Amaya FTW. For Thank you for subscribing at Tier 1. Fantastic. I don't, I don't think we have, like, other tiers. I think it's all just that tier. I don't, I don't think we have, like, variable tiers for subs. I, I mean, I think no that's idea. a... Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a victory for equality on all fronts. Yeah, there you go. All right, so next question. You called Hero the God of Winter. Are the other gods also seasonal? Do they wax and wane in power? So I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say it's a cool concept. They don't really wax or wane in power like that with seasons. They are like associated with they have like some kind of connections to aspects of the world and nature, but nothing as quite explicit. Like this is the fall god. This is the spring god. But like. Hirat has like domain over like you know, the north and cold and something that kind of naturally aligns with you know winter. Uh, Raya could be could be argued is aligned with you know summer and like the hottest parts of the you know of the year. But like it's not that he gets stronger in summer. It's just that as you know a god with a domain over fire, he naturally has a you know like you know is associated with summer. And Majasa could be associated with spring due to her kind of themes of kind of rejuvenating herself and regrowth, even though, you know, she's in a desert. So, like, the God of Winter would be less something that is... The God of Winter title is less from Hero's perspective and more from his followers' perspective. From Hero's perspective, it'd be more so God of, you know, this region and these people and God of, you know, ice and cold and strength. The the Winter described to be more something that, like, others would put on him as opposed to something actually intrinsic to him and his power. So I would say his power is more fundamental than winter, I should say. <clears throat> more fundamental than winter. That's that's a... <laughs> I mean, in the sense that it's, you know, it, more to do with ice and cold yeah. than the actual, like, time of year. It, it just had a, had a weird weird ring to it, but I liked, I liked that, that thought. <laughs> thank you. Uh, next question. Thank you for the great game you have created. Oh, thank you for playing it. Any plans to make some unique... Give access to other classes, skills, or proc them on hit. This is one of the most fun things that will too with some rune words, like the Whirlwind Assassin or proccing Frozen Orbs on Kick. Uh, I never played Assassin that much in Diablo 2, so please correct me if got you. WW wasn't Whirlwind. It was. No, you, you Chaos Claws, Whirlwind. Uh, okay, I had a feeling. Yeah, um, and, uh, short, short answer is yes, mostly because we already do this, actually. Um, the crap, I'm free, what's the belt? Uh, uh, the meteor belt, the cast on meteor belt. Yes, a uh, string of stars, Har Harbinger, chain of stars. Harbinger stars? Yeah, yes, harbinger of stars. Harbinger stars yeah. uh, I, I just say the word harbinger so little, it you know completely forgot the word existed. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Um, so, so there's, I hate you. The Harbinger of Stars belt is uh, the first example of that, uh, and we do have. Um, the, I've I've seen quite a few internal ideas and external ideas pitched uh, that that also help with that, um, or that that help with that that would expand that theme, um, and I I I know we've. We've looked at exploring that theme from a couple other angles as well. Uh, so. I know one example that's like like brought up like every every time this comes up in like a design meeting, one example that always comes up is the idea of having a bow that gives someone wolf some yep. way. Like that's that's like the like the like main example that always comes up when we talk about this, and it's honestly a very exciting class fantasy. Like the poster yeah, child it's, example. It, was that? It's the poster child example. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, next one. I've got arachnophobia. And also the question, I've got arachnophobia and found a mod that replaces all of them with white boxes. Can I use this to enjoy the game or hope that you will all add a mode to help with this? Rich, do we have an arachnophobia mod or a setting like coming? We've actually talked about it fairly recently. Um, I don't know where we landed on that. Uh, Mike, do you have any like more you know insight on that? Um, it's... There, uh, I, I don't want to make promises in case that something falls mm -hmm. through, but we are we are actively um, working on addressing arachnophobia and other accessibility issues in the game. Um, like we, there's there's we there was a big discussion we had recently that was like, do these scorpions trigger arachnophobia? To be like, do these need to also be replaced for arachnophobia settings um, and things like that? So so it is something that we are actively developing. Um, I don't have any sort of timeline on it for you, um, but it is it is a it's something that we consider. An, an important issue. Good answer. Okay, on to the next question. Is Balthus still alive in the Ruined Era? Well, I will say he's not dead in the Ruined Era. So to actually, to actually <laughs> answer the question a bit. <laughs> uh, this isn't a spoiler because it is like content that is in the game right now. Um, so after chapter one, where Balthus, you know, takes the shards and, you know, sends both sends you to the ruined era and he disappears as you go into last refuge and get into the uh, last, you know, the last archives of the kind of library area right after the council chambers, you can find lore notes written by last refuge's first elder. And if you read them, it sounds very much like very similar and is voice acted by the same person who voice acted Balthus. And at the end of those little lore notes in the last archive, talking about how the first elder founded Last Refuge after he you know, appeared in the Ruined Era outside of his own, you know, will, he you know found out they had to leave and you know left Last Refuge behind, knowing that it'd be you know in good hands. So Balthus is somewhere. He is not dead yet. Not dead yet. He's old. He's not that old. <laughs> Sweet. And on to the next question. We'll be able to have male or female for every class. Um, Michael, let you take that by the, the kind of short version that I believe is still kind of the case of we'd love to, but gosh, that just literally doubles all of our animation and armor fitting, like, you know, steps for everything to do with items and animations. But yeah. I'll let you give and, me more info on acting. there. Voice acting mm -hmm. too, and there's 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 a lot of stuff like the dialogue has to be touched. There's, there's so many things that, that it, it affects. Um, we do have long-term plans to include character customization into the game that would include body type as a setting um, or as an option, and uh, th this is something that we are. It, 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 this comes up very frequently. Easy. We know it is an incredibly important issue to um, to, to some of our players, and um, it, it the um, the, the 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 time and cost and like development time cost that that goes into something like this is shockingly high. Um, it's very deceptively difficult and time consuming to do. And um, we do we do have plans to add character customization at some point. Uh, it I can tell you this for absolute certainty it will not be in the next patch. No question that it's it's it, it's not coming next patch. I'm sorry. Um, we we haven't even started on it yet. Um, but it is something that we know is, is extremely important to some people, and uh, we, we want to deliver a, a, a good experience for those people. So it's it's on the list. It'll it's a it's a ways down the list still. Yeah, like, like short version is we, we we want to. It's hard, 
we talk about it a lot internally. We just gotta find the right way to do it in a way that is efficient and is the best for you know everyone, you know all the all, for all the players. Whenever we are able to finally do something like that. Yeah. Okay. Next question: Is it ever explained where the players get their powers from? Um, depends on what kind of powers you're talking about. If you're talking about uh, being able to travel through time, that's from the shards of the epoch you get. You know. And that just becomes more the case as you, you know, get all the shards and complete, you know, re reform the epoch. If you're talking about their powers, as in like the skills and everything, um, that is by the nature of, you know, their backgrounds. Like the Sentinel, for example. So he, again, this is one of the kind of the downsides of us taking out the character specific intros in favor of the shared intro. But uh, the Sentinel's backstory is that he was a former soldier of Raya who, once he saw the destruction that attacking Heoboria was causing, decided to defect and fight against Raya after, after all. So his, you know, his powers and abilities at the very beginning, you know, are very much in line with being a Raya soldier. And as he advances, he gets stronger. He either, you know, leans into his background more and becomes a forge guard or he starts giving into you know the power of the void he's seen from being in the ruined era and becomes a void knight or he decides to hold on to his own willpower and hope and start to kind of forge a new path like what raya should have been and becomes a, a paladin and the same thing can be said of you know the other you know classes their 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 powers are from their backgrounds and where they decide to take them and the kind of shades of alternate thems that went down these other paths that they embrace whenever they make that mastery choice for Gaspar. So I hope that answered the question. Wonderful. And also from you, you know, clicking the buttons and, you know, <laughs> deciding the skills. The real power the comes from the strength within. The power comes from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Will the past acts see an update? Will there be any retcons that you foresee? Also, so, also just want to say thanks for the gifted subs, Airweird, to, uh, to to Judd and Steve. <laughs> Not that they need it, but thank you hey, very I much. I love anyways. those guys. <laughs> <laughs> were, were those random? I, I, I wanna, I, if, if those were random, that's absolutely hilarious. Man, I don't know how Twitch works. <laughs> well, you, you can. I think you can give subs to people specifically or just randomly. Um, so I, I don't know if those were specific or random. I think they were random, though. I mean, Judd is the luckiest person I know when it comes to like games and stuff. Yep. I'm lying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I said that because I know he's in chat. <laughs> just to mess with them. Oh, you gifted specifically. Okay, it was targeted. Okay. Less, less, was okay. less, less ridiculous, but still cool. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, next question. Will the past act see an update? Will there be any retcons that you foresee? So, I don't want to... There's nothing set in stone for, like, when we'll update past acts. I will say that the area that is going to very most likely be targeted whenever we do go and update a past act would be going through chapters... Four, five, and six, and upping those in quality. Those right now are the oldest parts of content in the game, as far as like what's been updated or not. Because chapters one, two, and three have seen updates far more recently than four, five, and six have. Like four, five, six did get a very good of actually, yeah, that, that's a little bit out of date actually, because from a level design and enemy perspective. 4, 5, and 6, the entire Imperial Era stretch did get a really good makeover looks-wise and enemy-wise. So those have been updated. I, I, Yeah, so those are in a better state than they used to be. But as far as like quest design and just events happening in those scenes, those are the ones I still want to target the most out of all of our currently existing chapters. Like, uh, you meet the Outcasts and the Outcast Queen early on, and you kind of don't really interact with them that much afterwards. You're really just going to tag along with Alwork for the majority of your time in the Pillar era. That's something, I, will, I wouldn't call that a retcon, I would more so call it a kind of rework or expansion of events there. I That's one thing that I personally want 
to go back and kind of improve the most as far as our, our existing story goes is going to that Imperial era stretch and making the outcast and the outcast queen matter more and have on top of just having the player just do more stuff in those like in those scenes in those chapters because like like the like the quest and event design for chapters four five and six is absolutely our oldest at the point you are kind of going in a straight line for a long stretch of there so yeah that that's the part i want to go back and you know update the most but again that kind of is constantly at odds with like making new content making new systems you know stuff like that so uh, there's really no like set in stone kind of plan on when we would update those but yeah i would love to go back and make it to where like the outcasts are actually a faction people can like recognize and feel attached to and you know feel like they're actually part of the game's world as opposed to this little like pit stop you see for a second and then it's the all show he is handsome though people love him i love True. him um okay well, uh, just a quick note here um four more minutes uh so at, at 40 minutes past the hour we're gonna stop taking questions um, and we'll just we'll, we'll power through the remaining questions that we have here for the end of the stream. So if you if you if you are sitting, you're like maybe I want to ask a question. I'm not sure. Get it in now. You got a couple minutes left before we cut off question taking. And I will say when we cut off the questions. Keep going. And with that being said, is there a corruption level that the dev team considers a good build? I believe CLF prophecies end at 320. Do you think players should get to 320? 500? 800? A thousand? 2,000? A million? Mike, what do you think? I, I, I think usually you consider, someone says like, oh, I've got my corruption up over 300. I'm like, that's a very successful build. Um, you've done a good job. You're kicking butt. You're, you're like, you've hit all of the like points where things unlock. As you mentioned, the 320 is where the prophecies stop changing. Um, I think 300 is where the last rank of, uh, when, when you finish a timeline, the last, uh, the, the fifth option unlocks for the blessing you get. Um, so like we we don't we don't have anything that shows up in the game past that that point So roughly 300 is sort of like where we consider a successful build to happen It doesn't mean that the builds won't push higher than that. Um, but that's where we sort of like uh, Look at like time to time to unlock things to be reasonable um, For like, you know people that are pushing those 2,000 corruption I've seen some that are ridiculous like that's the the, the time to get up that high is insane um, and usually uh, all the ones I've seen so far, I just say usually just in case there's not, but all the ones I've seen, um, they, they've all been on builds where there's been a mistake we've made in the build. Um, and there's there's something that's interacting the way we never intended it to. For, yeah, in the, fact, the, in, yeah. yeah, in fact, internally we call it a Leonidas. Like, we see a build that is, like, hitting that, you know, the target number of 300 cards again. Yep, that's a Leonidas right there. I'm lying if we don't do that. No. But yeah, 300 is a good number. <laughs> also, good movie. Yes. Okay, and next question. Sorry I joined late. No worries, I understand. Not sure if you answered already. I'm not sure if we have yet. Would it be feasible once you reach 100, the love, the experience echoes would auto-replace with meaningful echoes? Uh, we, don't um, have any, we, we, we don't have any plans for this. We've considered this option a few times. Um, they do still do things. Um, and... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not impossible. We don't have any plans to do it. Good answer. Uh, next question. Why are the people in the outcast camp totally cool with my necromancer walking through the camp while being at war with the Emperor? That is... Good question. Actually, yeah, it is a good question. It kind of, like, it kind of, you know, interacts with a couple of questions we had before. Like, uh, just a minute ago, somehow, like, I would love to update that entire stretch of the game with the outcasts and the outcast camp, like, four, five, and six. I would love to update those, and... One thing that'd be great to do there is play around with, like, the game recognizing your class a bit more. Like, I would love it to where if we update that, the NPC would actually be way less friendly to you if you're an acolyte and, like, have different dialogue that's way more standoffish and way more kind of like, hey, we're watching you, you, you know. You best not step out of line. Exactly, exactly. Because, and kind of dipping on a, another thing, like in the Imperial era, yes, undead are very much, you know, 
like generally associated with the Immortal Empire. Before the Imperial era, there was necromancy that was just kind of more hidden and more kind of in the shadows because they you know, weren't you know accepted. It you know the acolyte could be you know seen as like, okay they are a hedge necromancer not associated with the Empire that's you know using you know necromancy to fight against the Immortal Empire as well. Again, part of yeah, part of uh, you know updating that stretch is what I'd love to have like an actual kind of beat where the outcasts aren't sure about you and you need to kind of prove yourself to them besides just talking to the outcast queen off the bat. So that is one of those kind of like weaknesses in the presentation of the outcast that I would love to go back and you know improve if we were to ever revamp those Imperial Era chapters. Nice. <clears throat> Next question. What exactly is a Chrono Worm, and what does it do in the ecosystem? So, the end of time is kind of this outside of the world kind, you know, space where you know reality has been almost completely eaten away by the void, and there's not much left besides these kind of floating debris. So, outside of the world, there is life as well, and the main example of that. Are these chrono worms? The chrono worms are essentially the native, the native life, the native creatures of this space outside of reality that's left when the void is eaten away everything else, and they act as kind of scavengers for this kind of you know detritus of these dead timelines, eating the kind of floating fragments that are left over. So they are a a native, you know, natural creature that lives in this space outside of everything that are just gonna having a good buffet, a good meal with all these dead timeline fragments that Orbis are Orbis is creating from erasing everything. It could be argued that Chrono Worms are aliens. I wouldn't use that term personally, but it could be argued. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. What exactly are Liath's arms? Are they pure mechanical or similar to the gold and silver elementals? So it's kind of, that's kind of, they're more mechanical. I will say that she powers them with magic gift from Lagan. It's not like just pure, like, you know, uh, pneumatics and pistons and steam and stuff. It's, and there is magic powering it. That's, you know, one of the kind of hallmarks of any of the kind of technology you see in the Divine Era. Like you see like the Solarum constructs, those little kind of walking spider things and the siege golems. Those are, you know, you know, mainly mechanical, but they are powered by magic, powered by fire magic. The same things going on with Liath's arms and her contraptions. They are mechanical in nature, but they are rather than being powered by steam or, you know, you know, hole or anything it's powered by lightning magic in her case magic from lagon so and the gold and silver elementals are a similar case but kind of more kind of veered towards the magic side of things they don't have as much mechanical things going on but they are a similar kind of inanimate object animated with magic just with less kind of mechanical complexity compared to lia's constructs so short version is it's kind of a spectrum, with Liath's arms being way more on the mechanical side. But they both share that kind of inanimate object, powered by magic kind of, you know, Nine. spectrum. All right, question. Who is narrating the cutscenes? Is it Gaspar? It is not Gaspar. It is the Observer. And I'm going to leave the question there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost a little mean, but yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> being mean i'm being direct <laughs> okay so it is not gaspar the person narrating the cutscenes is the character known as the observer who you see in that first kind of intro cutscene and you'll learn more about their deal in the upcoming campaign chapters foreshadowing foreshadowing we have stopped taking questions um, by the way so if, if you are if you're asking more i'm sorry we're not gonna answer them yeah we are currently in uh, cleaning up the last ones in our queue so up next is what's the philosophy or the philosophy of infinitely scaling corruption? You've mentioned before that you have ideas on how strong builds are by certain tiers of corruption. So why not have a corruption top? So Mike, why is there not a a ceiling to corruption? This is something that I have been sitting awake at night thinking about uh, a lot lately. Actually, um, I think the main reason is that. Uh, 
that that possibility that there's always there's always a chance you could do something even harder there's always that like there's always room for improvement um that i really like um and i i, I think it's a really positive thing to have in the game but it's i, I agree it's a little bit of a, a a strange dichotomy where if you if, if you're not expecting people to push just forever why have it be there um and I, I think it, it comes down to a lot of, um, like, that we, we just, it makes more sense if we have the balance of top end builds tighter. Which we need to do. Yeah, that's, that's a very good answer. Like, like if we had a, a, a hard ceiling on corruption, you would feel like you're kind of, like, done with the game a lot sooner. And also, yeah, just... Be able to see a build like, hey, this build can hit a thousand corruption, and we can get a million hone and like, huh, that's not right. What's going on there? <laughs> Big yeah. On to the next question. Will there be any new class representation in the future or specializations? Uh, Michael, let you take that one. Oh yeah, um, we've been we, we we've been talking about all sorts of different options in the expansion of classes, uh, that sort of stuff. We're uh, primarily going to start looking uh, well, like when, when we do eventually start increasing the class options uh, the initial avenue will be expanding more mastery classes um, we do have plans for uh, new base classes and uh, other stuff William I like that answer and next question what have you guys have been up to since launch Oh, nothing much, you. <laughs> it's, it's it's been busy. We've been uh, like we're we're working on one point one. We've been patching one point oh. Um, you know, there's everyone's got a ton going on. Uh, me personally, uh, a lot of work. Yeah, I might be going to Scarborough here in a few weeks. I'm excited for that. Actually, I uh, I think it might be next weekend. Actually. Oh, cool. Gonna go see Jacques the Whipper. I think he's only there for one weekend. <laughs> nice. I've got to say, love some on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that'll be fun. That's what I'm doing next weekend. So, all right. Uh, next question: What are the team's plans to make the lore more accessible to the community as a whole? Recordings that play while moving rather than standing still, etc. That's a very good question. We want to do everything we can to kind of improve our presentation on that front. It's it's one of the just kind of like hallmarks of being a you know a, a you know a team that started out very small with people who kind of never made a game before and just kind of building on this railroad track as it's running in front of us for so many years like, like I'm, 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 I'm like i'm always reminded of Wallace and gromit you know they're like exactly. dropping down the train tracks <laughs> exactly exactly like we like it, we've been talking about a system called Lore Collectibles for, I think, over a year now, maybe two years at this point, for which, like, you know, hitting that kind of niche of, you know, these recordings that play while you walk around instead of, like, you know, a standing still conversation and, like, make it to where, like, you would interact with these and they would go into a whole UI section that can let you revisit them later on when you, whenever you wanted to go and look back over them. Like, a, like, as I'm sure people notice, there are these lore notes throughout the game now. Like they started popping up around when we introduced the uh, chapter one overhaul. Those are actually the kind of like place, not I won't say placeholder, but just the like early version of getting this lore collectible system kind of going. We just have not had the bandwidth to be able to kind of hit that kind of idealized plan for them where they can play while you're walking around they're stored somewhere in your like ui with a new element they can go back to and replay them like so it's something that we want to do more of and better it's just we've always got a million things to do like that are more pressing than something like that so it's it's on our list it's it's one of these that's on the list <laughs> yep Next question, is WASD movement still just at the state of discussion, or were there any updates to that? Michael, let you take that one. Uh, it's, it's something we are continuing to explore. 
it's 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 not uh, a, it's, we don't have a firm answer at all right now um, that topic, Fair but well. we are we are exploring it right now. Good answer. A next question: Will we see Keeper Balthus again? Maybe. Not gonna go into more details on that. I do want to bring him back for some of the kind of like, you know, stuff that happens later. So I, I do. There, there are plans to bring him back. Yes, he, he's not. The tent isn't for him to just disappear entirely. There, there is a theme, a soft theme, kind of going on with you know we have a gas bar and a Balthus, and I want to get them into the same room at some point. Maybe with a third person. <laughs> that hasn't been that good. They're gonna form a band, it's... a rock band. And... No. <laughs> I would love that. Can we do like a rock and roll cycle? Like, like, like introduce like a guitar. I mean, Fortnite has a guitar hero. Why can't we have guitar hero? Yeah, right. <laughs> Loot hero. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. If the gods influence the player's abilities, what are your thoughts on other entities giving the player power in the future? I mean, you guys have found those Weaver items, Weaver Will items. I mean, that power's coming from somewhere. The Void Knight has power, you know, from the Void. So, so it's, yeah, it's not just the gods that are the source of power for players. Like, the Primus, for example, is like, you know, pulls a lot of his power from nature itself and animals and like the land and weather and everything and like well there's a lot of overlap with the gods in that it's not entirely the gods supplying that power uh the mage like there's like you know touching a similar stuff as the gods but like the mage isn't like mainlining power from the gods by any means so <laughs> yeah the players do get you know like power from other sources than the gods <clears throat> next question is the Imperial Era Seer a former Keeper? Maybe Lena. Uh, yeah, but the uh, the Outcast Seer that's in the uh, the Risen Lake, she is not Lena. Uh, whenever we do have Lena show back up, it will be obvious that she's Lena. That that this you know, that it is Lena. The Outcast Seer isn't Lena, but she is one of the last Keepers that have kind of you know survived. I don't want to say survived into the Imperial Era, because that implies I like, know she was alive in the Divine Era. More so, the Keepers as an organization kept on being a thing after the events in Chapter 1. And yeah, the Outcast Seer is one of the kind of last Keepers, and the Keepers essentially kind of helped form the kind of initial foundation of the Outcast. So, <clears throat> that answers that one. What's your favorite paradox that currently exists in the game? Mine is the predestination paradox in Chapter 4 with the Imperial Officer's Crest being Officer Hump's Crest and the future last EP1 Owobis. I have to say my favorite's Owobis as well. That's 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 a that's a um like an emoji. Oh, I like it as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 like like that's it just comes through as text in these. I I I don't know what your problem with Owobis is. I love it. That was <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know yeah, okay. um, I'll, I'll say my favorite paradox is one that hasn't been encountered by players yet Ooh. it's gonna it's gonna be something that happens in one of our upcoming three campaign chapters nice. <laughs> uh, okay next question are there future plans for adding rewards for finishing on the leaderboard? Like a cool vanity, maybe a banner or a portal, something that can be made unique for each season. Will make the leaderboard actually be a worthy thing to grind for merch? Leaderboard rewards. Mike, any yeah. thoughts? Yeah, Le leaderboard rewards are um, a, a, a target for us. It, I think while we, we, we knew that the first season, the first cycle would be very volatile uh, and uh, put, putting in a valuable reward for uh, the, f the first cycle especially would be um, I, I, I think it would, would have left us open to some some, some issue uh, uh, it's, I, I think there's a very good chance we expand into that type of thing later I'd love to I think there's uh, really great cool ways to like uh, really cool unique ways we can uh, distribute some some fun things like that and um I, 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 it's, it's on the list. 
Good answer. <clears throat> Next question. Who are the pinnacle bosses coming in 1.1? 1 .1? Mike hasn't had any leaks this stream. Well, um, let me start digging up some concept art real quick. And I start kind of dra no, we can't say that kind of stuff. Sorry. Thank you very much, Airweird. That is five <laughs> gifted subs to the channel. Congrats oh everyone who got God. one of those. Arrow Weird, you are a hero. <clears throat> Next question. Are there any uh, specific plans to update the fidelity of the Vazar search capabilities? Yep. If so, any ETA? 1.1. 1 .1. Michael, let you hit this. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a few things. So we're, we, we are desperately trying to improve the Bazaar functionality uh, to make it smooth and, and, and fun and all that sort of stuff. And there's... Um, there's a couple, with the way the data is structured in the back end, there's a couple things we would love to do that get requested pretty frequently that we can't do right now. Um, but we are we are working on improving the bizarre search functionalities um, and, and all other little things that it needs as well. So like we are, um, th there's there's features missing from the bizarre that we know we need and we are working on them. Uh, some of those, yeah, those searching, filtering, price checking, uh, all, all sorts of things. There's, there's, there's lots, there's lots of features that are just aren't quite up to, um, the, the smoothness that we want them to be yet. Um, so we are working on it. Um, so yeah, it's, that's it's a, that's, yeah. I was going to say, it's a constant iterative process and yeah. yeah, we are, um, we are at the end of the questions that we took and we only have three minutes left, but if there are, uh, any couple questions? We'll, we'll just look directly at chat right now, and uh, maybe if there's if there's anything you want to sneak in under the wire, um, we'll we'll just grab a couple fresh ones right now. There's one here. Good afternoon. I was curious. Oh, it's scrolling on me. Is there if there's any plan to tone down elemental nova effects for Rune Master so I can play Trirune Helmet without getting a bad headache? Uh, not not specifically, but it's a good thing to leave feedback on. There is uh. I, I, I know what you're talking about. It goes a little ridiculous right now. We, we are constantly trying to find that that fine balance between, um, hey, this looks cool and out my eyes. Uh, and it's it's surprisingly difficult to hit, especially when you have um, modifier effects that will make them make things bigger. And because you got to have like the base be cool and still have the difference from the base to the bigger be cool and, you know, have it not go too far. So so it's it's something we are will will we'll be tuning in i i'd like to have the oomph be inversely proportional to the size this one's out to my oomphies <laughs> if there's any in chat you want to grab uh, if there's any lower ones there just just go ahead and grab it oh uh, lower ones let's see here da, 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 da. let me just scroll up for a second From Mr. Fibble, the ancient earth seems to be very underutilized. Will we get to see more of it in the future? Uh, hold tight for one of the uh, upcoming remaining three campaign chapters. That's what I'll say there. Um, let's see here. Any other more ones that. Oh, there's one here. Uh, who made mm -hmm. the vessels of chaos and memory in the Echo Web? In the timelines. Oh, same person who made the waypoints and made the uh, monolith. Cycle two when asking for him. We don't have a set date that we're. It's not. Uh, we don't have a public date yet. Um, roughly in the ballpark of three to four ish months from when we launched 1.0. Any plans to choose PvP? Um, hopefully someday. Nothing concrete right now. <laughs> What's the lore on Armor Shred in particular not being searchable? There's no lore. It's just a mistake. <laughs> That will just about do it for us. You know, I'm just going to wrap this up here. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, everyone, for your questions that you asked. Uh, this was a ton of fun. Uh, yeah. If do you, do you have any any anything you want to add on to the end of this? Anything you were hoping to get asked that didn't get asked? Oh goodness. Um, <laughs> I put in an Easter egg in End of Time, and no one's found it. Oh my god! <laughs> You're just going to drop that nuke and walk away? 
because I'm still sad that no one's found him. Oh my god. Well, on that awesome <laughs> revelation, because I get asked frequently if any Easter eggs um, are missing, and I say no. Unless, I mean, I, I mean, it's an Easter egg if it's something that's like, you know, from somewhere else in the game. Like, it's, it's not an Easter egg to something outside of the game. It's like, it's a secret. I should, I should say it's a secret in End of Time. All right. That's good. Let's, um, let's, leave, it's it there. let's leave it there. No, no, no more, if no more hints. If, I might have to double check it if it's actually working, but do you want me I haven't to go seen to anyone talk about and, it and see if, it, if you can see it. What's that? If I go to end of time, will you be able to tell if it's there? Um. Hmm. You gotta do some certain things to make it happen, okay. which is why I'm starting to wonder if, like, it just, you know, isn't working. <laughs> We, how about this? We we will confirm for everyone that's gonna go out and hunt for this. We will confirm that it's working or not, uh, and and we'll 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 post it somewhere and ask the devs or something like that, just to, so that there's like a confirmation if this exists or not. Because I don't want to send people on a wild goose chase. We'll, we'll we will confirm if this is working or not before everyone goes off and looks. Hand in chat. Hand in chat. I said it is working. Last he checked. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, here we go. Well, I hope I see a screenshot of that thing I put in. This this is news to me, but I love it. Okay. Oh, gonna, yeah, you don't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to end this here. Thank you so much for coming on. I'd have last. We will uh, we'll, we'll try and get you on again at some point down the road because I know a lot of people love these. Um, if uh, anyone who was here was asking a question and uh, it, we didn't get answered, I'm sorry. We do our best to answer as many as we can. Uh, we do have an Ask the Devs channel in our Discord open that you're welcome to drop by. We're also active on other platforms, uh, Reddit. There's other social platforms that we got people hanging out in all over the place. Um, so come talk to us, all sort of good stuff. Um, we'll be back same time, same place next week, um, hanging out, playing more Epoch, answering more of your questions. Uh, and that's that's about it. I hope, hope you all have a wonderful time. Um, yeah, this was a very fun. I had a great time. You're all wonderful people. Anyone whose questions get answered, I my heart goes out to you. I apologize. It's a big chat. Uh, yeah, I had, had a great time. I like forgot how fun this was from last time. We should do this more often. This is a great yeah. time. And oh yeah, one more thing about the secret. It's not the giant Corona worm in the back. That guy's obvious. He's he's hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, lo love you all. Hope to do this again sometime. Love all of you. And I did not prepare someone to go look for, so we're going to a standard one that I know is safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it for us. Um, I hope you had fun. I know I did. We'll see you back here next week. And uh, drink lots of water. Drink lots of water, even from a giant jug, even if it's too big for you. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to drink mine. Bye.